And coming up on DC News Now at Noon, the migrant debate grows more heated. A look at what's being considered in Washington, DC and how the community feels about the influx. And an assault charge becomes murder, an update on a violent attack. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us for DC News Now at Noon. I'm Mark Hall. Weathercaster Brittany Ward joins us with the latest check on the forecast. And Brittany, I have to tell you that the fall and spring are really my two favorite seasons. <laughs> Same here. But I've enjoyed the last few days for sure. Yeah, you know, Mark, we are going to be seeing those warmer temperatures begin to creep back up, even those dew points. So the humidity is going to be really warm out there. So definitely keep it here. We'll have a check of that forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Brittany, thank you. Well, new at noon, government officials and humanitarian groups are scrambling to control the surge of migrants from the southern border. DC News Now's Christy Mentino tells us what council members in the district are expected to do today to address the crisis. The D.C. Council will consider emergency legislation from Mayor Muriel Bowser to create an office of migrant services. And we're told that the migrants that arrived here yesterday at the Naval Observatory are now being housed in an undisclosed location. But organizations and D.C. leaders scrambled yesterday to meet them here at the Naval Observatory after they arrived. And the Office of Migrant Services would help with that kind of a response if it is approved. Now, Bowser wants to allocate $10 million to support the office that will provide support for migrants and that includes meals, accommodations and transportation and volunteers tell DC News now that the help is much needed. So not only a language barrier, I want I want everyone to understand the mental and physical fatigue of the journey that um, we need to attend as well as um, greeters and as humanitarian organizations. But some are expressing concerns about the legislation. The Washington Legal Clinic for the Homeless says they're concerned the bill will impact those experiencing homelessness. And some volunteers are also concerned just about the emergency piece of it, right? They want to see more long-term help for these migrants. That includes medium to longer term housing as well. In D.C., Christy Matino, D.C. News Now. All right, Christy, thank you. Now, we've heard from the people on the front lines of the crisis, but how do people living in the district feel about the growing number of migrants in the area? Our team reached out to neighbors in the region, and many of them say that they welcome the people searching for a better life. Sharif Mamadou is an immigrant himself, and he came to the United States from France more than a decade ago. And he says that he fell in love with the country, and America inspired him to paint and create art about his experiences. America gave me the opportunity to be who, who I am. Voila, America listened to me. When I talk in the neighborhood, people listen to me. And Sharif says that he hopes the migrants dropped off in the district yesterday are able to build a life that will make the long journey worthwhile. Well, the families of WNBA star Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan are meeting with President Biden at the White House today. Both Americans remained imprisoned in Russia. D.C.'s Raquel Martin tells us about the purpose of today's meeting. Friday, President Joe Biden is meeting with the families of WNBA star Brittany Griner and Paul Whelan, both currently imprisoned in Russia. While I would love to say that the purpose of this meeting is to inform the families that uh, the Russians have accepted our offer and, and we are bringing their loved ones home, that is not what we're, we're, we're seeing. Sadly, the White House says they do not have good news to bring. Thursday, White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre said Russia has yet to accept their offer to do a prison swap. In August, the Biden administration offered to free Russian arms dealer Victor Boot in exchange for both Griner and Whelan. They should accept our offer today. We will keep working diligently until the day we get to share that good news. The White House says negotiations with Russia are ongoing. Griner is now serving a nine-year sentence in Russia. She's been detained there since February after airport authorities discovered vape cartridges with cannabis oil in her luggage. Whelan, a former U.S. Marine, has been detained in Russia since 2018 on espionage charges. The White House says both Americans are being wrongfully detained. And that was D.C.'s Raquel Mark. Now, there's no word on what time the meeting will take place, but according to the White House, the president will sit down with both families at the same time. Well, new today, a man arrested for assaulting a senior citizen now charged with murder. Prosecutors and police say the 25-year-old 
Julius Wright beat 87-year-old Johnny Lee Shepard back in June in Beltsville. Shepard died from his injuries. His death was recently ruled a homicide. Now, this is a picture of Wright, and surveillance video captured the incident that occurred on Cherry Hill Road in Beltsville. Now, he could be seen repeatedly hitting Shepard. Shortly after the assault, police arrested Wright. He was initially charged with first and second degree assault and reckless endangerment. The charges were upgraded to murder after the victim's death. Well, police say that it all was all captured, and police say that it was over a dispute about a car damage. If anyone has any information about the incident, you're asked to contact Prince George's County Police. An update to the Trump investigation. A veteran New York judge is now the independent arbiter for the case. Raymond Deary will review the classified documents seized from the former president's Florida home. U.S. District Judge Eileen Cannon also granted him access to the documents. Judge Cannon is also refusing to lift a temporary ban on the DOJ to access the documents. Request denied. D.C. sniper Lee Boyd Malvo will stay in jail after he was turned down by Virginia the Parole Board. After reviewing his case, they decided that Malvo is still a risk to the, to the community. It's been 20 years after the series of shootings that terrorized the DMV. Malvo was 17 when he and John Muhammad shot and killed 10 people and hurt three others during coordinated shootings that lasted for three weeks.